Hello friends, this is a video demonstration of a spigillian hernia treated by laparoscopic TARM. Spigillian hernia is a rare interparietal ventral hernia. It appears in the lower quadrant of the abdomen with a defect between the linea seminolaris and the acute line. The external oblique aponeurosis is almost always intact. The case in discussion is a 38 year old female, ASA grade 1. Her family is complete and she's planned for a laparoscopic transabdominal retromuscular repair. The port setup is displayed on the right side of the screen, where the surgeon and the assistant are standing on the head head, with the patient in supine position. Initial survey reveals a hernia that is almost 8 cm inferior to the umbilicus with densely adherent omentum. This is the external view after the initial laparoscopy. The flap and the mesh area are marked with a dotted line. The omentum is dissected from the defect using a bipolar device or a vessel sealing device along with gentle traction with the grasper. External compression sometimes makes the reduction of the contents easier. Once the contents are reduced completely, the defect is inspected. The flap is marked at least 7 to 8 centimeters superior to the defect. The lateral limit of this flap is linear semilunaris on both sides.
This is almost like a flanking maneuver that is used in the military tactics to neutralize the enemy. Although in this case we are doing it to preserve the linea alba from any injury during the flap dissection. Flap dissection in the midline is done after creating both spaces, both retromuscular spaces, as this helps in preserving the linea alba on the anterior roof. The inferior epigastric vessels have to be preserved on both sides and have to be pushed upwards with the roof. Before proceeding to tackle the flap at the hernia defect, we've created adequate space on both sides of the defect. This helps us in keeping the peritoneal defect as small as possible. Once the flap is dissected from the hernia, further dissection proceeds inferiorly below the arcuate line. The arcuate line can be well appreciated here. Dissection proceeds further between the two layers of fascia transversalis, as you can clearly see. One is a very bright yellow color on the roof and below is the slightly orange flap in the midline and thin peritoneum on both the lateral edges of the flap.
anterior myofascial closure is done using a transfacial stitch with a proline 10 on needle suture the defect is closed in a continuous fashion with incorporation of the external oblique or the external fascia along with it the needle is delivered externally with a suture passer and an extra corporeal knot is tied After the peritoneal defect closure, the measurements are taken using a ruler. we were able to get a 15 into 13 cm mesh inside the flap and we were able to cover the defect on all sides by at least 5 cm A single point fixation is enough as we feel the mesh gets sandwiched between two anatomical layers of the abdominal wall. The biomechanics of the abdominal wall keep the mesh flat and intact in the same space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
After the complete closure of the flap, the next step is to evacuate the CO2 that is trapped inside the cavity. I find this as the most exciting step in the surgery. Here is the final port placement with the actual surface marking of the defect. Thanks for watching.